Hey everyone, it's Sion, the Unexpected Maker, and I'd like to introduce you to the new ESP32 S2. And there it is. That's it. That's the new ESP32 S2. Let's get a little bit closer. It's a little bit better. It's still pretty small. So this is the current beta silicon of the ESP32 S2 that I received from Espressive a few days ago. It's not the final silicon. There are some more changes they are making to it. But that is it. That is the chip. So let's talk about where it sits within their product line. Here is an ESP8266 module. The chip is designed to be more advanced than the A266, so it sits after the A266. Here is the ESP Room32 module. So that's where it sits in the product line. It's way more powerful than an A266, but has less functionality and features in many respects than the ESP32 that's currently available. But it also has some things that are slightly better than the ESP32. We'll talk about what those differences are shortly. For now, let's discuss how this chip is going to become available to people. This is the module reference design right now that's got this chip on it, as you can see right here. All of these chips are numbered, which is pretty cool. So this particular module layout is pretty similar to the Rover. In fact, it's probably the same as the Rover. And as you can see, there's some RAM on here. There's some flash, external, crystal, and everything else. And there's the room to put the shield over the top. The chances are, even though the chip is still going to go through another revision, at least one revision, that's going to be the shape of the module. And right now, there is a reference board that I also got that has that module sitting on here, but obviously it's not in module format right now. It's just on the board, but that's where the module would be sitting. And one of the features of this particular chip is that it will have built-in USB. But right now, that is not currently available in this version of the silicon. And so the reference board still has a separate CP2102 to be able to connect the USB to it to flash it. But once the final silicon comes out, there will be onboard USB, so you won't need to have external peripherals to control and flash the chip. And that onboard USB will also support full speed USB on the go, which is pretty cool. Now, just to give you a size comparison, here is my tiny Pico. So this is using an ESP32 Pico D4, which is the same size chip, the same size QFN, but this particular chip has built in crystal and flash. So it's what's called a SIP, a system in a package. So except for one of these chips, except for this chip right here, which is on the bottom of this board, all the rest of everything you see here, except for the antenna, is actually inside this chip. Now I'm hoping in the future Espressive will come out with a new Pico chip that'll be the S2, but inside a SIP package. That'd be great. Because as you can see, if I look at all these peripherals here, it doesn't really save me a lot of space using something like this on a future Tiny Pico when I might save by not having the CP2104 and a couple of transistors, but I'm going to lose that space anyway by having to put a crystal and a lot of passives there. But that's it. This is the board. Let's now have a look at the specs. Okay, let's look at the specs, and I'm going to do it as a comparison to the ESP32. So cores. The S2 only has one core, not two, but it's using a newer extensor LX7 architecture that's supposed to be more performant. Both still have the same ultra-low power coprocessors. Speed, both go up to 240 megahertz. Memory, there's only 320 kilobytes of SRAM compared to the 520 kilobytes of SRAM in the current ESP32. Only 128K of ROM compared to 448, but both have the 16K of RTC memory. With peripherals, there are more I.O. on the new S2 than you can currently find on the ESP32. There's 43 programmable GPIOs, 14 capacitive touch I.O.s compared to 10. Your usual assortment of SPI, I2C, I2S, so forth. The S2 has a built-in LCD interface, so you can drive LCDs directly with it. There's a camera interface, so you can drive cameras, and there's full-speed USB on-the-go support. I'm not sure about CAN bus and hall sensors and everything else. I would assume they would still be in there, but I can't find any documentation to support that right now. When it comes to connectivity, this is the other big difference between the two chips. There is no more Bluetooth at all. It's just Wi-Fi. There is support for time of flight though, but it's just the straight Wi-Fi 802.11, BG and N. 
Now there are other features in the S2 that may be slightly different. There's what seems to be new security features, but I'm not going to jump into those right now. So that's it. That's the new ESP32 S2. When is everyone going to be able to get their hands on it? No idea. When is the next revision of the silicon coming out? I don't know. I can't wait to get my hands on it because although I want to start designing a board using this new chip, right now I can't actually put one together even using this beta silicon without putting external USB support on, which kind of defeats the purpose of the type of boards I want to make. But it's going to be a killer feature when the final silicon comes out. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Big shout out to all of my patrons, especially all of the new patrons that have joined me recently. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.